People ask me all the time, how did you land on variable resistance? Why did you decide that's the best stimulus for muscle growth? The real answer is I wasn't the one that determined that. That was actually Louis Simmons. But I'll, I'll get to that in a minute because my journey was a little different. I didn't approach anything from a strength and performance perspective. Some of you, probably most of you don't know about my first invention, which is OsteoStrong. So osteogenic loading, as I called it, and that was the name of my first book, it's about looking to optimize loading through the musculoskeletal system for the purposes of bone density, stimulation, and growth. What's osteogenic loading? It is the practice of strategically loading bones on their axis. So this is the axis of a bone. So you don't want to load it this way. You want to load it from end to end. So like that, you want to get loading through the bone that is more associated with the loading we would see in high impact type activity, not weight training. Because honestly, weight training, I mean, I don't know if he still holds a world record, but a good friend of mine, Matt Wenning, 1200 pound squat, 300 pound super heavyweight power lifter, held the world record for a period of time. That's not even enough load to stimulate bone growth in your hip joint. Because that's four times body weight and the minimum dose response for growing bone density is 4.2 multiples of body weight in the hip joint. And that was, um, was a study out of Bristol, United Kingdom, that determined that. But we all knew it was associated with impact and, and even before that, that research came out. I wrote my book and, and developed this product before that research came out. But we, we just knew it was high. So to get that high level of force, obviously, the what the machine does is use robotic arms to move the subject into a position where they can get as much force through the musculoskeletal system as possible. And so, like in the upper extremities, I'm gonna have 120 degree angle of inclusion from my upper to lower arm in the back of my hand in line with the clavicle in this position. And then I'm just going to extend the arms. Now, there's not actually a lot of movement in this osteogenic loading process because what happens is you're just you're compressing the bone, the radius, the ulna, the humerus, the clavicle, all the whole kinetic chain becomes compressed. And in that compression of bone, you stimulate the bone to grow. So I developed this and it was already out in the field and we did our first sort of clinical examination, collecting some data in, in the United Kingdom, University of East London to be specific. And the physicians at the hospital, the Stratford Village Surgery, they would ask, they wanted to use it, they weren't test subjects, but they were using it because they all had low bone mass. So they were using it and they would say, wow, like we're really dealing with huge amounts of weight here. Right, because we're optimized. Like, like I said, now it's, there's four movements, I'm just doing the upper extremities because it's easy to demo that right here in front of you. What is most profound is you're dealing with weights, even, even the people who were in this initial study, they were postmenopausal females, and they were getting like six, seven, eight times body weight through this process. It's just for a couple seconds, but it's, and, and that, that's for the lower extremities. They had incredible results. So they, they built more, more bone density than even the other studies. Now, I, they were really compromised. So I think that's part of the reason why they had such an outrageous response. But really compromised people are a better reflection of the public than healthy fit people because there's not a lot of healthy fit people. So it was probably a more accurate study. But when going through this, the doctors that were in the study were saying like, how does this loading compare with, with what people do in the gym? Of course, none of these doctors had been in a gym in 20 years. So they, they didn't have a good perspective on what people lift. Now, fortunately, I, I went to the NAINS database. And in the NAINS database, you can see what, and there's been many studies done using the NAINS database for determining what sort of averages are, what people do in a fitness environment, and what they really saw was that typically people when loading their lower extremities for the purpose of strength exercise, beginners are at usually 1.3 multiples of body weight 
And advanced, what they refer to as advanced is in the top 1% were at 1.53 multiples of body weight through their lower extremities. I know like everybody who's a bodybuilder or a wannabe or you know, whatever is like, oh, uh, that's bullshit weight. Okay, m maybe it is for you, but we're talking about regular people here, not the outliers. So like, I don't care if you have a big squat, good for you. This is, this is we're trying to help humanity here. Uh, so I know it seems low. That's just what people actually do. Probably part of the reason that people don't really get results from going to a gym and lifting standard weights. When looking at that, I was like, wow, like we're right around like there were people six, seven, eight times body weight, whereas everybody else is dealing with one or not even two times their body weight. 1.53 was considered the athletic or trained person. So like there's nothing you're doing at a gym that's going to be effective for bone density treatment typically unless you're doing high impact so like box jumps jumping up doesn't do anything for you jumping down can get you that 4.2 multiples of body weight and as i began to understand this whole dynamic it's like okay wow the human body is capable of so much but we really don't do much with it because that's not how weights work and so i thought because i'm having these postmenopausal women doing this therapy and they, they started with two or three times body weight on the first session, which is a very significant amount of load, but you're optimized in that almost lockout position. That's how you brace for impact. So we also call this process impact emulation. So they would go through this process and they were growing bone. They were growing bone like younger people grow bone. Typically only younger people grow bone and that's part of the reason why. So this is a safe way to emulate high impact. And as I saw what happened to these people and how their bodies changed and their health changed by getting really high amounts of load, I was like, wow, weightlifting sucks because we're not really accessing our capability. Like we're all a lot stronger than we think we are, but we train full range with a static weight. Now, training full range is awesome. What I describe with OsteoStrong is not training in full range at all. It's very, very limited range, but it's for a very specific purpose. If you want to train a muscle and you want, want that muscle to grow, you need to use as much range of motion as possible without creating an injury. So the idea you want to go way back on the bench press, eh, you'll screw up your shoulders doing that. But you want to go, you know, whatever's comfortable to the bottom. And then you want to go and, and you know, taking a more narrow grip actually gives you more, more range. Bigger the range, the better. But that's, again, for muscle growth. So basically, I, I looked at what I learned with OsteoStrong, and I'm like, I wonder if just the entire concept of weightlifting could be challenged. Like, I, I don't think it makes much sense anymore. That alerted me. I started doing some searching on sports performance. It alerted me to variable resistance, and I found Louis Simmons and Westside Barbell. And what I realized very quickly was, wow, if those guys knew what I was doing with the extreme high weights they would probably be even more emboldened to put more variance as opposed to weight. When you look at what's going on at Westside Barbell, one gym in Columbus, Ohio, has broken more world records out of that one gym, the athletes have trained at that one gym, than any country on earth, including the United States. So it's probably the greatest example of absolute sports performance dominance. It would be like if the Green Bay Packers won the Super Bowl every other year. Like, I mean, football wouldn't even be that interesting. It's like, okay, who, who's there here from Westside? I guess they're winning. That's how, how that works. And now Westside does most of the instruction, training, and education for the strength and conditioning coaches for the NFL, as well as a lot of the UFC and a few other sports. I saw what they were doing, and they were, they were lifting weight, but then they would put bands on the bar also. So sometimes half of the weight would be banded and the other half would be just static weight. What I realized in that process is, okay, you don't actually need the weight as long as the bottom of the exercise, the stretch position is loaded. If it's not loaded, you're missing out on some growth. But as long as you know there's, there's engagement back here, there's engagement at the bottom of the squat, you can go to fatigue there especially after you go to fatigue in the stronger ranges of motion 
with really high weights. So like, for example, when I do a variable resistance chest press, I'm holding 550 pounds at the top. And so I might hit that 20 times. That's an incredible benefit for taking my pectorals to exhaustion. Now, when I go to fatigue here and I can't get there anymore, and now I just shorten the range because it's a band that's being stretched. So if I stretch it less far, it's giving me less weight. So now I can still continue to work and do what's called lengthened partials. And uh, Milo Wolf, Dr. Milo Wolf is probably the best scientist on that subject. And he's been studying this for a long time and he's established a lot of, lots of benefit of extra growth that you happen with doing lengthened partials. It just so happens that variable resistance is like born for delivering that length and partial benefit because as you go to fatigue, you can deal with a slightly lower amount of weight in a more lengthened range, a more stretched range of motion, that's gonna stimulate way more growth. So my whole journey went from developing OsteoStrong and then really understanding what Westside Barbell and Louis Simmons were doing, and then just running experiments with variable resistance. Again, making sure the bottom is loaded. You have to, bottom of the exercise always has to be loaded. I say this over and over again. And then some of the important research on the subject. We have the Benjamin and Ralph's study from 1996, showing that in an axial format, the highest weight when, when so the axis is, th is this, is when you can line the bones up in one line or sort of, because when you perfectly line them up, you're actually locked out. So you, you do want to slight, keep the tension on the muscle, but when the bones are loaded like this, the tendons and ligaments become stronger. And that's a Benjamin and Ralph study. So it's like, I realized right away, like the body needs this. That's not at all. Like we can't get to the right amount of load to grow tendons and ligaments with weights. I, don't, I mean, not if you lift in full range, not even close. Variable resistance gives us that, and then we can get a massive stimulus without a whole lot of risk. Because the riskiest part is that stretch range of motion, but the weight drops off and you're pre-exhausted as you get into those shorter repetitions that are just in that range. So the risk of injury is very minimal and the exhaustion is so profound, you will grow. And that's the story of how I discovered variable resistance, understood a little bit more, and from a different perspective, from a medical perspective, I understood it. And that's all the information that I applied when starting with a clean sheet of paper and developing X3. If this video helped you, I want you to subscribe and follow. I'm going to put out videos on a regular basis. I think they're going to help a whole lot of people, especially if you're one of those people that doesn't just instantly grow from lifting regular weights. We've got the answer for you.